Welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking for the elusive Scottish porcini mushroom. Also known as the Sepp Penny Bun, the King Belit, the Stein Pills in German, and in Latin the Belitus edulis. It likes to grow near oaks, beaches, hemlocks, cedars, conifers, and uh, yesterday I think I may have seen some when I was cycling past a wood full of white pines, so we're going to go check it out. There's been a lot of rain recently and a sudden drop in temperature. Um, it's August now and things are beginning to cool down and I think it's the perfect conditions for the, the seps to come up. It may even be the elusive sep year, so let's go have a look and see if we can find any. Right, put the electric fungi finder down and continue on foot. We're in a small forest of white pine. Um, it's well drained to the east and west and it's kind of going in a long strip. I think I can see some porcinis over there already. So let's continue on foot and see what we can find. Oh, and there, a tiny, tiny one coming up. Another one here. You can see the stem. It is often wider than the cap. The cap looks a little bit like a bread bun um, and is often nibbled by creatures because of its delicious nature. Found a really nice one here. When you're picking them, you want to make sure that they're still quite hard. If they're soft, that means that they've probably been a little bit too old or they've been eaten by too many things. So I'm going to pick this guy and we can use this for the linguine tonight. There he is. Not the best. Been chewed a little bit by, I don't know, slugs and things. But uh, we'll take it back and see if it's any good. There's another nice one. Hasn't been eaten by anything yet. That'll be good. Nice little porcini. Still hard and good. Here's a porcini that never made the pot, obviously. Got munched. Nice one. Perfect. Get it before the slugs do. Ah! Oops. Didn't mean to crack it. Another little one popping up. Give him a few days, maybe he'll be big. Just found this lovely Amanita muscaria. Um, they like to grow in exactly the same places as porcinis, so if you see them, you might well see some porcinis. Sure enough, one and a half meters away. Just found this mature porcini here. You can see that the older specimens actually have a yellow sponge, so they start off life white underside, and when they get older, they turn to yellow. Very bread bun like on the top. Unfortunately, this lovely example. It's a bit past it and probably very maggoty. So I think we'll just leave this one to propagate as many spores as possible for next year. You can see very bread-like on the top. Underneath quite yellow on the mature specimen. Classic porcini. I just found a wee beauty. This could be the best specimen yet. And not too many maggots by the look of things. Ah, absolutely stunning. There you go. Beautiful middle-aged specimen there. A little bit more of a subtle brown on the cap than the last one we just found. And uh, you can see that the sponge and pores is still very, very white in there. Be careful. Although it looks kind of like a baby porcini. Can you see the scales on the cap? So that means it's an Amanita. And it could even be the Panther cap or the Amanita muscaria. And if you ate that, you'd probably have a very uh, uncomfortable few hours. Pretty happy with that for about half an hour. Never found so many porcini before. I'm a bit annoyed I broke this one when I when I picked it but oh well. I'll show you a few more features. Have a look at the stem there that's where it attaches to the mycelium covered in pine needles and things and you often get these lacy brown lines running up the stem and then one of the classic porcini features, you can see it just up here, is what I believe is called reticulation in mycology. And it looks a little bit like a spider's web, it's kind of webbing, 
just before the cap. Another feature is where the stem meets the pores, there's often a little undercut. You can see the dark line there, it's the sort of, it's like an undercut. I think we'll give these a little clean now, so I'm just going to try and remove as much of the needles and duff as possible, uh, but keeping as much flesh as possible, because even the bottom of the stem is really tasty. I swear before I came into the forest I could smell them. The aroma of the porcini is so strong and so mushroomy that you'll, uh, once you've smelt it, you'll always remember. It's a beautiful, savoury kind of smell. It's almost a caricature of the mushroom smell. It's kind of creamy, chickeny, steaky almost. It's uh, really, really savoury, which is why it's so prized for cooking. Hopefully in the uh, linguine I'm going to make later, this is going to give beautiful aromas along with some chanterelles that I'm hopefully going to find next. seps and our chanterelles, I'm going to make a mushroom tagliatelle. Our seps that we found, our chanterelles that we found on the way back, um, and we're going to cook those with some bacon, some shallot, spring onion, smoked garlic. And I'm going to put a tiny bit of chilli in there, probably half, half of that maybe, to spice it up. And uh, there's the tagliatelle. I'm going to season the mushroom part of it with salt, pepper and a bit of paprika. And once they're fried off, I'm going to add some cream and make a creamy sauce. Cheers.